The text flow feature in InDesign has occasionally caused a little confusion for users, so I want to walk through it for you and show you the variations of how we work with it. Please note, I'm starting a document here with a total of three pages that's going to become important in a few minutes. Once we have a file open, we normally start by creating at least one text box with our type tool. We don't have to, but it's easier when you know where the text is going. So I'll switch to my type tool first. I'll go ahead and drag to create the box, more or less the same size as my margins. And I'll leave it selected so that it's paying attention. If I were to click away from it with my selection tool, I could still use it. In fact, some people prefer to do that for various reasons. Just make sure we click on the box so the text will know where to go. Or, as you'll see in a moment, we can even just click with the type tool once we've got our text ready. I'll go to File to Place now and tell the program I want to go grab some text. I have a document with Latin filler or nonsense text here to use, so I'll give that a double click. I now get what's called the loaded text icon. program knows that I want to get some text in here, and I just have to make sure where I put the text. I'll click here near the upper left corner of what I know to be my text box, and the first chunk will land in place. There's more text than will fit in here. I can tell that because if I look down at the bottom right in the outport, as it's called, there's a red plus there telling me I have what's called a text overset. But that's not a huge problem. At the moment, I have a couple more pages that I can use that text in. So I'll put the cursor here on the overset symbol, give a click, and I immediately get another loaded text icon. I can even scroll using my mouse and not have to worry about the cursor changing back and forth. Once I'm down where I need it to be, in this case on page 2, I'll put the cursor at the upper left corner of the margin there for page 2 and give another click. And again, another chunk of text is landed in place. We go to the overset symbol once more, click on it, another loaded text icon appears, another chunk of text ready, click near the upper left of page 3, and continue on, and keep going the same way till we run out. I'm going to go ahead and undo here a couple of steps to go back to the beginning situation and hit my escape key to turn off the loaded text. What I want to demonstrate now is how we use a couple of the keyboard shortcuts to assist us. If we have larger amounts of text, we can indeed use a couple of keyboard shortcuts to speed up placement. Once again, I'll go to File to Place. Notice I don't even have to worry about using my Type Tool just yet. Again, I double-click on my Latin filler text. Again, I get my loaded text icon. However, before I start clicking to place text, I'm going to hold down, in my case, the Alt key on a PC. It would be the Option key on the Mac. And if you look very closely, you can see that underneath the arrow, the part of the cursor that indicates what I'm doing text-wise has changed. I've got the little curly arrow there telling me I'm in what is called semi-autoflow mode. And if I click now, oh yeah, I get the text in place, but I also get a cursor immediately reloading. And again, I can scroll down, go to page 2. I'm still holding down my Alt key on my keyboard. Click at the upper left of page 2. I move over here, didn't have to click the overset symbol, all I had to do was move over here, click again, and as long as I keep holding down that Alt or Option key, the cursor keeps reloading for me automatically. So I can place text as fast as I can scroll and click. Once again I'll hit my Escape key, and I'll go ahead and undo a few steps to again go back to the beginning. If I wanted to place text even faster than that, I could hold down both the Shift and the Alt or Option key, and this will put me in what's called Fixed Page Auto Flow. If I know for a fact that I've got a fair amount of text to place in the document, but that I need to fill it as quickly as possible without adding any more pages, sometimes that's good, sometimes it isn't, I can use the Fixed Page Auto Flow technique. Again, File to Place, double-click my Latin filler. This time, as I said, I'll hold down both Shift and Alt. 
Now, as you can see, again, if you look carefully, different kind of arrow shows up below the hotspot, the upper left. And if I click at the upper left corner of page one, I immediately throw in as much text as will fit on all three pages. I'd have to zoom in a little to see it sometimes, but we can now see all three of the pages I created have their text. There's still more to follow, as we see from the overset symbol here, but I've got the text landed as fast as I can make it go. Once again, I'll undo and hit my escape key. The last mode that we want to be careful with uses just the shift key. That's what they call autoflow, just plain old ordinary autoflow mode. The program will add both pages and frames, especially the pages part we have to be a little careful about. This can be a little troublesome if the document needs to be of a certain length, so we want to use it with caution. But it does work. Once again, file to place, double click the text document, I hold down just the shift key, I click at the upper left of page one. Now. If I take a look at my navigator, I see that I've added two more pages to my document because that's how many more were needed in order for me to land all the text. As I scroll down, you'll see here that the text finally runs out on page five. As before, if we wanted to cancel a text placement, we can always tap the escape key when we see the loaded text icon. But the main point to remember is we have some keyboard shortcuts to assist us in placing text, which one you use, of course, will depend on your need.